Uh, I just I I want to start off um, just taking a like if you take like a thirty thousand foot view of of this season from how we started to how we finished, the big transitions that we went through, uh, the responses from our players and our coaching staff to how we competed in this series to you know in the play in with Miami to Boston, I, I just couldn't be more proud of how how they showed up professional. It got better. We always talk about. How do we become the best version of ourselves for whatever that means in whatever landscape in the context that we're in? I think I think we did that. And I think it gives it gives a lot of hope for the future. And what it does is it, it really allows us to reflect on where we've been and where we're at right now. And uh, I'm very proud of this group. Very proud. Yeah, it seems like a lot of the guys have bought into what Quinn Snyder has been bringing. And they've all said that they've noticed a cultural shift. Sure. What does that mean with Quinn and, and how much he's been able to kind of have an imprint on these guys in such a short amount of time? Ah, it speaks volumes of, of Quinn. I think it, it speaks to what we identified early in him and why we thought he was going to be the right coach for the job. And just watching him work day in and day out, the rapport he has with players, the level of respect, the level of detail that they all respect. Um, the ability to engage and not just be in a supportive sense, but also in a challenge without guys shutting down is very difficult to navigate in this league. And he's done that. Um, and it's been, it's been fun to see, like really, it really makes, makes it a good working environment, um, and a real collaborative effort for all of us moving forward. And of course you guys have a lot of work to do as far as maybe evaluations on how you move this roster forward to the championship team that you want it to be, I guess, mm -hmm. where start with those evaluations and, and moving yeah i mean we'll, we're gonna get there we really are i mean like the craziest thing about sports is they just season abruptly ends mm -hmm. you know um not even 16 hours ago and so i think sitting in that space right where, where beforehand just looking at the way in which they showed up and there was life in that series and you know you, you're giving boston something to think about which is a very good team you know um is where our focus is at and it's like okay like if that's if that's sort of the floor where can the ceiling go and we'll sit together as a front office and you know with quinn and the coaches and just figure out okay well this is this is what we need to do to take the next step I, I mean, I really think it's it's, <laughs> it's gonna be very beneficial for us. Um, and being able to go into the summertime and start to really inject more and more of what's already been uh, placed before us with Quinn and a new system and a new set of standards and a new absolutes just in, from a, a cultural standpoint has been good early, but then now going into next season where that sort of set is gonna be really beneficial. So guys walk in, knowing, okay, this is what we're about. We've cut out some of the things that we needed to cut out. So now we can really direct our eyes on where we need to get to this next season. So I, I anticipate all the guys will come back, you know, ready and, and willing to take the next step because we will define what that road's gonna look like. Well, it was good to have a reference point, you know, before Quinn came and seeing kind of where we were at and understanding that there's still there's still components of that that you do have to take into account. You do have to balance that out. But then you also see the progression that guys make. And, you know, you're you're somewhere in between at that point. Um, but it's been very hopeful, you know, like that's where I don't I don't sit up here and say we've arrived. Um, but I also know we're not where we were, regardless of the record. Like we are a different team. Um, you could see it in the guys' faces. You could see it in how they approach practices day in and day out. The the intentionality behind Quinn and the system, the culture that he's cultivating more and more of, it's very exciting. Um, 
but you gotta you still have to understand like yeah we haven't arrived we got plenty of places to go but we do want to celebrate how far we've come Well, you do it by um, watching a lot of film for sure, but <laughs> you do it where you, you bring in the absolutes. And that's something that we've talked about a lot, what Quinn talks about a lot. Like in order to, to have an identity, you have to have something that you do time and time and time again. And that rhythm and those predictable patterns are ultimately going to bring out a defensive identity, let's say. And so when you define those, then it gives you that evaluation. You have something where you can see and they're like, okay, that is or that is not what that looks like or what we want it to look like. And then you just keep hammering it out. Like it's really, I mean, it gets simplified, it's just reps. It's, it's saying this is what we do, how we do it, and then just continuously practicing over and over again. And you gotta give it time too. You know, to, to expect perfection is, is a fallacy. You know, really it's about expecting progression and showing up every day to 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 hammer that out well i don't expect you to tell us you know what your plans are with trades or anything like that john is a name that consistently comes up in kind of those rumors i mean what is your vision for him and how do you see him potentially fitting on this roster moving forward i think it's the same that i've spoken about just in the past um yeah john's name it, it comes up a lot and he's a good player like it should like a lot of teams value him and we have a lot of value in him um, we're just not quite there yet on how we're going to piecemeal this together we do have to take some time to celebrate but then also to look back and figure out okay what are the next steps like what is the pathway with the particular group and the particular system that we're implementing um, in order for us to take that next step but we need to we need to take time in order to reflect on that as a group Oh, it was, it was extremely valuable. It really, and what our business side has been able to do and how they've been able to partner with us on this journey, like that's a huge credit to them. You know, like there it's, yeah, we have to have the right players in place and you want to have a winning culture and want to have something that's, uh, that's the word I'm looking for here. It's appealing, I guess, to the to the general crowd and the fans. But at the same time, like they do a good job as well. And to have players such as Trey do what he did in Boston um, gives you that spark, that life, that just just that thing about sports that everybody loves and they gravitate towards. Like you find that in very special players. And um, I know that that's very attractive for, for a lot of fans, but to have them show up as they did and to be loud as they did, like it felt like a true home court advantage. Wish we could have got a different outcome, but um, we're going to need more of that, and, um, and that'll be good for us in Atlanta. Yeah, well, I mean, some of our younger guys, I think, are, are obvious to, to play. And, you know, when we take time, we're going to lay out development pathways for every single player. It's going to be customized to who they are as players and how we want them to fit into this system. And then Summer League is just going to be a great, uh, great feedback loop for them to go try to practice it more and more in like real life game situations. Um, and it gives us that proper mirror to see like, OK, like this is how they're progressing and, um, and then go from there. But, yeah, I'd imagine a lot of our younger guys and we've spoken with a few of them about it already. Um, but that's also a team that we're going to have to strategically place together because we do. There's there's a lot of stuff we want to accomplish in summer league this year. Um, well, I, it, you know, I, just in the question, I mean, he's, he's not the type that comes and says, oh, I deserve this, that, and third. I, I, it's a day by day thing, but it's also him just like, we haven't even had those, those talks. Um, like 
those will come in time as the season progresses and as we look at this this roster and how it's shaping up and and whatnot but uh and it's just not an area that we've touched on yet, and I'm sure we'll get there. We'll get there. How do you see Trey and DJ's relationship, or just even just dynamic on the court, evolve throughout the season to where it was for the series against Boston? Yeah. So I was I was on um, I, think I was on record by saying at first it's to be expected that it might look a little clunky. You're asking two primary ball handlers to now share a backcourt with each other, but two very talented playmaking ball ball handlers. Um, and it's it's had its ups, it's had its downs, to be honest. I think that we've all seen that where it, it, looks, it looks a little clunky, um, but there's also times where it's been beautiful to watch. They play for each other, they play within the game flow, and you just see how talented they are as a group where it's like, well, if, if that guy's not doing it tonight, that other guy sure is, and it becomes a nightmare for the defense. And so it's still it's still working um, in a complimentary sense, but I think we got a great taste of it in the last last month here. I think Quinn has been able to, to figure out a great way for those two to coexist in a way that is going to enhance our group. But like Trey Young and DeJounte Murray is your backcourt. That's that's a fun backcourt. Oh, of course, yeah. I mean, he's – for Trey, Trey is, has such a high IQ himself. To be able to have that, uh, that connection with somebody else, he greatly respects. And I think it's showing him some new things on how it can enhance his game. It's great because you look at a guy like Trey and you're like, wow, he's really good. Like everyone's like, okay, well, he can get better here, over here. But what about some of these nuances that – not a lot of people can achieve, but oh, Quinn could see that, and he can speak that into his into his life, into his development. And for Trey to have those aha moments is is great. So yeah, of course, from, from my standpoint, like you, you, you're always learning, and that's what you always want to do. And to have uh, a mind like Quinn to be able to share the same space with talking about basketball, uh, yeah, you're gonna learn a few things for sure. <laughs> You know, I think that one of the most underrated rule changes to happen specifically for us was actually uh, the foul calling and how Trey during that Eastern Conference Finals run was able to really take advantage of that. Um, when they changed that rule, you know, it forced him to become different, not completely different, but it is something where he had to reinvent himself a little bit. And so I look back to to that instance and go like, yeah, that was that was a significant change, you know, because you think about the game flow, right? If you're able to draw those fouls, you get in the bonus earlier, you're shooting more free throws, points go up, you get guys in foul trouble, the game flow stops, guys are able to rest, able to set your defense. Uh, there's a number of things that that impacted, it's, you know, that were contextually really important for our group, not just for Trey, but just like, especially on the defensive end as well. So um, that was significant for sure. And as as the league goes along and, and they make the changes that they do, and that's good for the game, you know, players will adjust, coaches will adjust, and we have enough bright minds to think strategically on how we can best take advantage of that stuff.